Are you ready to start schmoozing? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay. Uh, there, there we go. There we go. Now we're Whoa! Ready. That was fast. We're schmoozing with Brad. Now we're schmoozing with Brad. So it's uh, midterm elections. Yeah. Uh, Nesquik voted. I voted. Uh, the big issues for the 22 mid midterm election. I mean, it's not not nothing. Anything that we weren't already concerned about. Yeah, I mean, nothing so major, but just who's going to control Congress? Yeah. What's going to happen for the next two years with uh, uh, immigration, the economy, uh, investigations of Trump? Yeah. I mean, nothing, no big deal at all right. with this election. It's not right? heavy news. Not no news at all. <laughs> Actually, recent CNN polling said uh, no shock. The economy is the number one thing on the minds of yeah. Americans as they go to vote. Uh, there are 36 seats up in the Senate. There are 236 seats up for the House of Representatives. The Senate, if you remember, split 50-50. Yeah. And the Democrats only control the House by four votes. Historically, in the midterm elections, which is midterm elections are always the second year of the, of the president, historically, the, the uh, party out of power gains seats in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're dealing with uh, inflation, economy, yep. uh, immigration, crime. It's a lot of issues out there. Yeah. yeah. I feel um, like the conversation of recession has been all that I hear online. Mm -hmm. So, Well, you know, Bill Clinton was very famous in 1992 when uh, George uh, Bush, the elder mm -hmm. Bush, senior, yep. senior, remember his famous uh, read my lips, no new taxes, and then he raised taxes. Mm. Uh, and then the economy was not doing well going into that 1992 election. And there was a lot of issues that Bill Clinton, you know, that George Bush was talking about. He just won the Iraq war. Um, and he was talking about a lot of different issues. And Bill Clinton uh, very um, famously said, I believe it was Bill Clinton said this, it's the economy, stupid. Right. And uh, <laughs> that was the only thing Bill Clinton talked about. Because that's the only thing people cared about. Yeah. And still we're looking 30 years later. Literally 30 it's years. It's still later. the economy, stupid. Yeah. We have very high inflation. Uh, people don't feel the economy is doing well. And the voters are going to take it out on the party that they believe is responsible. And right now, the party that the voters think is responsible, <coughs> unfortunately, at least as far as I'm concerned, right. some people may say... Fortunately, some people are Republicans. I'm a Democrat. So unfortunately, uh, they're going to take it out on the Democrats. Crime, by the way, is crime is the number two, the number two issue on people's minds behind, according to the Gallup polling. There's been so many mass shootings. Yes. People Gun feel unsafe. Laws. People feel unsafe, especially in big cities like New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. Um, I'm not sure how people feel... You know, in the suburbs, they feel more unsafe. Whether or not that feeling is justified doesn't matter because people vote on feelings. They don't vote on right. facts. facts. Jinx. Yeah. I knew where you were going with that. Yes, they don't vote on <laughs> facts. They vote on feelings. And people don't feel safe. Yeah. Uh, so we have a situation right here in New York where uh, Governor uh, Kathy Hochul was expected to cruise to victory. Yeah. And uh, the Republican challenger, uh, Lee Zeldin, who is uh, against uh, pro-life, not pro-choice, yeah. uh, and has been hammering Kathy Hochul about crime in New York City and crime in the suburbs. And it resonates with a certain group of people. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be what was supposed to be a runaway for the Democratic governor it's a big group of is people. going to be a nail biter, and uh, and some polls before today, the last few days, even had Zeldin in the lead. Now, nine months ago, when Roe vs. Wade was overturned, we were all talking about that's going to be the number one issue. They're taking women's rights away. Yeah. But uh, apparently, economy, crime, even immigration is outpacing abortion in terms of what is prioritized in by people in the voting booth. Um, now, according to CNN poll, 44% of Americans say immigration is extremely important to them. 
That doesn't necessarily mean that all 44% of those Americans who feel immigration is extremely important to them is pro-immigration. Right. Many of them may be anti-immigration, may be restrictionists. Yep. So we have, we have a situation where it's very possible, if you believe the polls and you believe what's being read in the newspaper, that at the end of the night tonight, you're going to have a Congress that's Republican, yeah. both House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. And what is that going to lead to? Not a lot. Right. For it, now, anyway. It is not going to lead to a lot. This is what you can expect if we have a Republican Congress with a President Joe Biden for the next two years. Uh, if Republicans get control of the House, expect a lot of investigations into Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, the son. Mm. They've been talking about his laptop for years now. They're going to finally get a chance to get in there, to get into the laptop and see what's going on with Hunter Biden. And he was on, he was on, and Burisma, which was an uh, energy company in Ukraine that he was uh, on the board of trustees. A, bo a, bo a board of directors mm. and 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 the at least the Republican stance is well what does Hunter Biden have it know anything about energy why is he right. on this board of uh, directors of a Ukrainian energy company he knows nothing about Ukraine he knows nothing about politics and he knows nothing about energy why is he there so it makes him look very suspicious. very suspicious right now maybe who knows they are going to investigate the withdrawal from Afghanistan they're going to politicize that withdrawal it's already been politicized a lot. It's like giving the opposite party so much ammo. Correct, correct. <laughs> they are going to investigate why the FBI, uh, uh, why the FBI uh, went and uh, into Mar-a-Lago and took Trump's documents. The FBI says he didn't take Trump's documents. We took American documents that Trump stole. It depends what right. side, what side you're, you're on the aisle you're yep. on. Um, they're going to probably at least, at least probably look to try to impeach Joe Biden at some point in the next two years as payback for what the Democrats did to Donald Trump. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican of Georgia, has already introduced legislation to impeach Joe oh, wow. Biden. So the conversation is already yes. started. Yes. Another possible two impeachments could be Merrick Garland who is investigating Donald Trump and Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas of the Department of Homeland Security, who is being blamed for what's happening at the border. Expect a lot of, expect a lot of gridlock, a lot of political investigation. Joe Biden uh, said today, uh, if the Republicans take control of Congress, he has a special veto pen. So oh, wow. whatever, whatever they pass is gonna be vetoed anyway. So expect, if this is what happens, expect gridlock for two years and lots of partisan investigations by the Republicans. As a matter of fact, if there's a Supreme Court nominee, expect, expect if the Republicans take control of the Senate, expect uh, the, the head of the Republican caucus, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, to block any uh, hearings on nominating a Supreme Court justice, oh, like wow. what he did with Obama. So we've Expect seen that it before. To happen. We've seen it before. Yeah, he'll do so it again. He will do it again. So uh, that's what we could expect. A lot more misery for two more years. Oh, goodness. Sounds like so many headlines in one schmooze. Yes, a lot more misery for two more years. That's what I'm expecting. Uh, by the way, f uh, former Congressman uh, Romano Mazzoli, Kentucky Democrat, he died. You know what he was famous for? He died uh, just he died on November 1st at his home in Louisville at 90 years old. Do you know what he was famous for? No. The last major immigration overhaul. Oh, wow. Which was in 1986, 36 years ago. It was called the Simpson-Mazzoli Act. It gave amnesty to anybody who was here Prior to 1982, it gave amnesty to the agricultural workers, and in return, uh, it made it made it uh, finally it made it at that point 
uh, unlawful, un for c civilly, not criminally, unlawful civilly for U.S. workers to hire undocumented aliens. They thought that would solve the undocumented alien uh, issue yes, once sir. and for all. We'll give everybody amnesty, and we're going to start giving out fines to U.S. businesses who hire undocumented aliens. But what happened ultimately was they gave out amnesty to everybody, but they never, it was, it was, it was a hollow law because it was never enforced against businesses. Mm. All right, businesses got away with hiring undocumented aliens for the next uh, 36 years, undocumented people for the next 36 years, filling jobs that Americans didn't want, fueling the United States economy with cheap labor, right. making lots and lots of people rich, at minimum wage. At minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the immigrants who were getting rich. No. Right. It's not usually the immigrants no. that are getting rich. So it didn't really work out the way that Mazzoli thought it would work out. Um, Ronald, Ronald Reagan uh, famously said when he signed the law in 1986 that it's going to go far to improve the lives of a class of individuals who now hide in the shadows. And that's true because the people who got amnesty ultimately became U.S. citizens. And, and, uh, and green cards and U.S. citizenship. And ultimately, many of them made very great successes of themselves. What it didn't do, which is what they thought it would do, what it didn't do was stop undocumented immigrants from coming. Because they thought that if we fine U.S. businesses, then U.S. businesses are not going to want to get fined. But what U.S. business ever gets fined? Never. Right. Never happens. And this is good no news for people from Ethiopia. The Department of Homeland Security has designated Ethiopia for temporary protected status. Uh, that means if you were here and you are Ethiopian and you were here as of October 20th, 2022, you can apply for temporary protected status, which provides work permission, a promise not to deport you, social security number, travel permission, and usually what happens with TPS is once you get it, it never goes away. Yep. They keep renewing it indefinitely. It's not a green card. It's temporary protected status. It's the first time Ethiopia was designated. It's because of the ongoing armed conflict, environmental disaster uh, going on in, in Ethiopia, Ethiopia at the moment. And uh, you saw Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. He bought Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with that? You're a social media maven. I mean, he already has so much power. He can do anything with no, it. Do you think, you think Twitter is going to be saved by Elon Musk? Um, I mean, I don't think Twitter needs to be saved right now. You don't think it needs to be saved? No. It's... Well, according, according to the stock market, it did because they weren't making any money. It wasn't making any money from advertising. Oh, yeah. No, I and, could see that. Yeah. And, you know, ad by the way, advertising has caused so much so much misery on social media because the advertisers target individual people. You know, whether it's yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. He's a risk taker though, our boy Elon. I'm go I know, but I'm going on about advertising on social media. It causes division. Yeah. Be because you, you get to target, advertisers get to target people that they want to target and influence. Yeah. And what that ends up doing, t this targeted advertising, is the advertiser, whether it's po political opinion, a political party, or even just a corporation, they influence you to think a certain way, and you get bombarded with ideas, but you don't see other ideas. Mm. You only get yeah. ideas that you want, that reinforce what you already think, it doesn't leave room for like organic growth. No, but it also reinforces what you already think of it. It ends up dividing. I don't like so you're it. Only I, seeing one thing. Correct. Yeah. I don't. I don't like advertising for society on social media. I think it's bad for for society. It's made us more divisive than. Yeah, together. and I mean these things also select target audiences, like you're mentioning. Yeah. So you kind mm -hmm. of fall into this whole loop yes. of what they want you to correct. see. Correct. So anyway, Twitter's not making any money doing this. So they're going to charge uh, $8 to anybody who has a blue check mark oh, a wow. month to try to raise money. We'll see how many people pay that. And they are letting go 
7,500 employees, wow. 670 of which have H-1B work visas. Oh, wow. So if you have an H-1B work visa and you are terminated from your job, Twitter has to offer you, this is what the law says, they have to notify immigration that you've been terminated. They have to give you a plane ticket back home. And then you have 60 days to find a new job, file an application to change employers on your H-1B or go home. Wow. After 60 days, you're undocumented. So we're going to have at least 670 H-1B workers are going to go in that 60 day uh, trial or time ta time and uh and that's going to be a problem for them i don't know hopefully they'll be able to 60 day grace period so hopefully they'll be able to find jobs wow that's a lot of people Brad. yes it's a lot of h1bs and sadly <laughs> it wasn't neither you yes yeah, sadly that's quick you did not win the two billion dollar powerball I, I did it i can't believe it yes yeah, sadly you thought you were going to win it I did. Yes. I always have strong belief yes. in myself. Yes, Nesquik, Nesquik promised me $100,000 <laughs> if she won. I said, that's it? Just 100000 Yeah, she goes, Brad. She goes, I got a lot of people I got to give money to. Yeah. 100000 What are you complaining about? Right. I was a little insulted. I thought I would be at least in the half a million. I have to take care of my people, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would give me at least half a million. Wow. Yeah, all right, all right. But I said, you know what? I, how can I complain about 100000 Yeah, just hand it to you. Yeah. I would hand but it to you. But meanwhile, you didn't win, so it didn't matter. <laughs> but you know who won? A person in Joe, uh, out in Los Angeles won $2.04 million. Wow. Um, and uh, if they take it on a lump sum... I read it's $997 million in lump yeah. sum or $2 billion over 30 years. Which one would you take? I'm going to take the $997 million in a lump sum because I couldn't spend that money anyway. And I would always be scared. I'm like, well, what if the check gets lost in the mail? Oh, my you goodness. You know, the lottery goes bankrupt. I would, you know, just give me my money. It's $997 million. Right, I'll Come take on. a win is a win. Yeah, a win is a win, <laughs> right? I, I would take the lump sum. And what's also interesting is California, where, where the guy won. It was Joe. By the way, if you ever bought a lottery ticket at Joe's Service Center <laughs> in Alameda, California, Altadena, California, which is... Somewhere in L.A., you could be a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. um, but by the way, you know what I know it also is interesting about the lottery? It's a good, California is, is the best state to win the lottery. Mm, why is that? Because California doesn't charge taxes. state tax to lottery winners. Wow. New York State charges state tax. Wow. So on $997 million, your tax rate you're at the highest tax rates, 24% federal taxes you owe. But yeah. that's it. If you won the lottery in New York, you're paying 24% plus 10% state and 3.5% city. Mm -hmm. You're paying a lot more, almost 40%. All right, so. It's much better to win in California. You have to be California. strategic about this one, Brad. Yeah. <laughs>